All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking entertainment now. Um, and I have a special guest in the house, a good friend of mine who's uh, been burning up the screens and social media. <laughs> we'll find out a hey, little more about that. Jemima Osunde is here with us. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Happy. Mm, I, this year. <laughs> I was going to say that. I've seen you this year. How body? Body day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a doctor, and a lot of people, I know people know that. But um, just for those who don't know, um, what informed, you know, doing medicine when it looks like acting is yeah. your passion? What happened there? Um, to be honest, the answer is Nigeria. Nigeria happened to you too. Nigeria happened to it. Um, <laughs> I was in my first year when I started acting. And I think, to be honest, this might be the first time I'm actually admitting it. I thought acting was just going to be a while in uni thing, just a pastime have some extra change, you know, to what daddy was giving me. <laughs> but here we are. I mean, to be honest, I just knew once I started the college, I was in first year diploma in Unilag, and I just knew that this cannot be my entire life. <laughs> I need more. And so I, I just decided to try something, and then it was acting I tried, and it's brought me this far. So when you were going into uni, you had no... I had no interest. Like, I didn't interest even, at all. Acting was not... So what was it about your first year besides... Was it just the money? What, no. what, what, what was it? I just needed something else. because okay. So I did diploma in uni, like, and for anyone who knows what that's like, it's a hall that's maybe built for like 200 people, but we usually end up being like 650, 700, <laughs> packed in that hall. Half the time I wasn't seeing my lecturers' faces. I didn't know what was going on. I was literally just buying the hands out to read and prepare for exams. So I just realized going in every day to sit through these lectures, was, it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. So I wanted something else to do. Um, so I started to hang out with people that were into ushering businesses and whatnot. So I did that for a bit. And then, you know, an uncle who's in entertainment as well was like, I think you should try something in acting or presenting. And so I said, okay, went for a few auditions. And since that clicked, I just went along and did it. So did you at any point think, okay, maybe I should switch careers or courses from medicine to theater, mass communication, I mean, no. whatever. Why not? Nah. I mean, from when I was a little kid, so I had a neighbor, a medical doctor that I loved with all of my heart. I would leave my house and go sleep in their house. That's how much I loved that family. Um, I think he was my first contact with anything medical, and I just loved it. I remember as a kid, I injured myself, and he sticked my hand in my mom's living room. I was like four years old. And I remember things from as far back as when I was that, that little, and I just knew that it was fascinating to me. Like, it was bleeding, and all of a sudden, there's no more blood. He's a miracle worker. <laughs> so I wanted to do that. And on my room door, I had Osa's hospital. My idol name is Osa Uyi. Okay. So I had that on my room door. I always wanted to do something medically inclined. So even when I started acting and it was going well, it wasn't a thing of I would leave College of Medicine for acting. It was a thing of let me see how I can combine both, because acting was like it was out of the blue. It wasn't part of the plan. So how were you able to do that? Because when did you not make your debut sort of in, on, in Nollywood? Mm. When was this? Probably in 2014. Yeah. And you were in what year in university? I was just in my first year. You were still in your first year? I was year. in my first year. So did your academics suffer? Were you also worried about, you know, how suddenly being this public person would affect your reputation as a mm. medical doctor? You doctor know? physiotherapy. At oh, that point, yeah. I wasn't even thinking of blowing. <laughs> it wasn't a thing of people will recognize me. I think I, I thought about that too late. I didn't think about it from the get-go. Like, you will start doing this thing, and you become popular over time, and people will recognize you. I don't think I actually give it, like, thorough thought before I started acting. If I did, I probably might have been more skeptical about doing what I'm doing now. But for me then, it was just do, if I can combine it, might as well just do it. Nothing's stopping me. Um, my parents were very supportive as well. I think my dad's only concern was, if you say you want to do both, I won't stop you. But you just have to prove to me that one won't suffer for the other. Yeah. And the one he was talking about was obviously school. So it was, it was really hard, but I had a lot of help. My roommates, for lucky me, was my go-to guy to give me updates on what I missed when I was out there acting and people were class. <laughs> you know, she would write her notes and I would photocopy them and read while I'm on set filming, things like that. I had a lot of help. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you graduated now. Oh, I have. And congratulations, first Thank of all. You. How hard was it though? Was it as hard as, because whenever I saw you, 
you know, I would see you in a series or, you know, in a yeah. movie. And then I would go on Instagram, I would see you, oh, I have classes in yeah. your lab coat. I'm like, what is wrong with this girl? <laughs> and like, how is she working this? You know, um, was it as hard as it looked for a lot of us? You know, because I mean, I've never, I don't act, but I've been on, on sets set to yeah. see how demanding it is with the long hours. Sometimes you guys are shooting all through the night all into night. the morning, yep. which is also what kind of medical school looks like, you know, where you have to apply yourself 100%. Yeah. How did that, uh, you know, was it as hard as it looked? To be honest, it was harder than it looked. I think because I'm always smiling and I'm always very cheerful, people forget that or they fail to see. Well, I don't know if it's, I won't blame people. It's the image that I have. I'm always cheerful. I'm always happy. There were days where I was losing my mind. There were days where I'd have lectures from 8 to like 12 and I have a call time of 1 p.m. School is all the way in Surulere Mushi and set is lucky phase one. Lagos traffic. I'm in traffic, I'm sweating, the AC is on, I'm panicking because I hate when people have to wait for me. It was really hard. There's times where I'm filming in a different state and I have exams in Lagos, so I have lectures I have to keep up with. All I kept telling myself through all of it is, Nobody sent me. I'm the one that chose to do it. So one way or the other, I'll make you work. Yeah. I'll find a way, whatever I have to give. It was very demanding. And I think that's also why I didn't really have that much of a social life while I was in uni. Um, to be honest, maybe from the entire uni, I only have like two friends I still talk to. You know when you pass through school, but I didn't really pass through you. That's yeah. me. So I was hardly ever there for social stuff. Pro Were you people, popular in school though? I mean, people knew me. People knew me, but they hardly mm. ever saw me. Whenever I was in school, if I wasn't in the lecture hall, I was in my room sleeping, trying to recover from the stress of combining both. So to be honest, I didn't really have a social life. So I think it's now that I'm out of school and, you know, in my mid-20s, I'm finally exploring life and enjoying <laughs> outside <laughs> yeah, outside, <laughs> and whatnot so for me it was mostly while in uni it was always work and school that was it yeah yeah that's very interesting but I, so are you going to be using your degree though i am i intend to i'm i'm still using it at the moment i'm doing my nys <laughs> we saw the picture <laughs> <laughs> so i intend to use it but i've seen now that realistically um i i don't think i can do it eight to five or eight to four like I did. The whole of 2020, I was working in Luth as full staff member. And then beginning of 2021, I was just like, yeah, it's not sustainable. So I had to, you know, not continue with the job. But I know that I will. I'm very, very invested in um, health care, especially in Nigeria. We almost have no health care here. And I, I really have faith and hope that there's stuff I can do to improve it one way or the other so even if not directly as staff of anywhere i'm happy to i presently volunteer all the medical work i've done since beginning of 2021 has been voluntary so whenever i'm free from you know filming and entertainment i volunteer in whatever hospital i choose to um, and then as i gather money my entertainment is a means to an end as i gather my funds and i have a strategy i can now go forward and do what i want to do to help in healthcare. That's interesting. Now, you've said two things here that, that stick out to me. You know, first of all, you went into entertainment, not necessarily because you had a passion for it as a child. Yeah. It was a side gig or let me, you know, just see how we can do this. But it's also like it means to an end. An end. So are you doing this because you even like it? Is it something you enjoy? Um, or like you just said, is it just something you um, while I'm doing this, while, I do. but I still have my ultimate goal, you know, at the end of all of this. Yeah. Is this something you're enjoying? I definitely enjoy it. Yeah. I wouldn't put it before my medical work. Yes. My medical work is my baby. That's where my actual passion is. And I think that's, I will, that's home. I will always come back home. But I absolutely enjoy acting. I enjoy becoming different characters. In my real life, I'm very, it's only the people, you people that know me, <laughs> know my, <laughs> my true behavior. But I'm, I'm somewhat, I won't say, I don't know if shy is the correct word. So I don't really express myself that much in open spaces but acting allows me be that person acting allows me come out of my shell it allows me be different versions of not just myself but human beings that i might not necessarily have the opportunity to be in my real life um, it's also just very interesting to see before i got on my first set i could have sworn that the process of making the film was very different from what it is, it is yeah. making a movie is a hard job especially in Nigeria. It is so hard. Every kind of obstacle that you could think of, even the ones you think are unbelievable, I've seen them happen on set. So it's, it's, it's every time I'm on set, it's a new experience. I'm learning something new. It's exciting. It's yeah. a thrill for me. So you started acting in 2014. Yes. What was your first film? 
um, Jungle Joel, okay. former McDermott. Oh, okay. Yes, it was her first film. It was about human trafficking. Okay. So I played a little girl that was looking for greener pastures. For Have you seen it from. recently? And seen your performance? I, what I do you think? I saw it in 2020. <laughs> I saw it in 2020 and I screamed. Every time I watch stuff from the early days, I want, I want the ground to swallow me. <laughs> Even now, like I think it's not just a me thing, it's a general thing for actors. When you watch yourself, you start to see a thousand and one things, things yeah. you could have done differently, how I could have delivered this line differently, or my expression could have been. It's just how, it's just how every, I think every actor is, because yeah. when I have the conversations with my colleagues, they agree as well. Um, but it's also beautiful to see the growth, because Things I did in 2014, I definitely will not be doing now. <laughs> so it's very yeah. interesting to Speaking watch. Speaking of growth there, you started acting in 2014. Eight, sorry, four years later, or probably even less, you were in a movie with someone you've always said is, you know, someone you admire yes. a lot, Genevieve Naji. Not many people can, can pull that off. You know, you know, where you, you someone is someone, like a mentor, or a role model, mm -hmm. or just someone you admire. And in less than five years, you are in a feature film with a person which becomes an original on, you know, with Netflix. Yeah. You know, first of all, how did you get that role? How much did you scream <laughs> at the fact that it was happening? Hmm. And you were still a student. I was time. still a student, yeah. yeah. First, I just want to say, hi, Grandma. Hi, Mommy. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers. They're working. Okay. They're always working. Um, I have a prayerful family. Let me just put it that way. And they're always, they've always been focused on me. I'm a bit of a daddy's girl. Family, everyone looks at Jemima, I'm the baby of the house. So anything I want, anything I say that I need to do or that I'm interested in, they all back me up physically and in prayers. And it's always been like that. So I genuinely think all the favor that I get is because God is involved. <laughs> um, when I got the call for Lionheart, I thought it was a prank call. I had told the person, unfortunately, I have exams at school and I will not be able to do this project, sorry. And then that was it. And then like a day later, it was Juma for Ajogu. He calls back and he's like, oh, the executive producer said we should get your timetable. We'll work with your schedule. And I was like, the hell? I said, I'm not doing it by force. Tell them I have exams in Lagos. You are filming in Enugu. How do I want to do this? He's like, oh, but Miss Genevieve. I was like, wait, what? Who? <laughs> Who? Who? Which of the Genevieve's? Like, oh, Genevieve, Naji, that's the owner. I was like, oh, <laughs> wait, you should, have started, you should have started with that. Like, I've always wanted to work with her. always wanted to meet her. And I think the whole experience for me was wholesome. She is, I went there with a the perception. I thought she was very like strict and nah. Jenny was cracking jokes. I remember the day that I was supposed to catch a flight to Lagos for an exam I had the next day, my clinical exam, which if I had missed was an automatic extra year. I missed my flight. So I was sitting in Enugu on set at 7 p.m. when I had clinical exam 8 a.m. the next day in Lagos. I was sweating, I was under pressure, and I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyone who's watched Lionheart knows is about a transportation company. She was, uh, uh, she was like, should we reserve one of the drivers for <laughs> Lionheart? I was just like, honey, this is not the time to joke. <laughs> I was under pressure, but she had sorted it out. She yeah. already had a way out for me. So it was somewhat comical for her to watch me be under pressure and react, not knowing what she had planned. Effects, yeah. So I had the absolute best time working with her. The entire project, in Nkemowo, yeah. Peter Doche. It was one project where I got to interact with a lot of people like Rob watching, yeah. and I will always be grateful for the experience. Yeah. I like the fact that you mentioned a lot of those people, because it's something I like to ask them, and you guys, talking about you know, the generations of yeah. Hollywood, you know, and how things have changed, and about what a lot, of, a lot of people in your generation are referred to. Maybe not you in particular, but we hear about Instagram actors these days. People who get roles because of, you know, their following. following. They have a blue tick. They look yeah. a certain way, you know. They're influencers much more than even actors, you know. Do you hear things like that? Does it make you feel maybe not fully validated as an actor? Because that is the generation you belong to. To be honest, I haven't heard anyone say it about me. But even if they do, I can't be bothered. Because here's the truth. I can't blame the actors. If someone's employing me for a job because I have a following. That's because they also want to sell their film. They know that anyone, if I have 700,000 people that follow me on Instagram, that's a possibility of 700,000 people that will watch your film because of me. Now, I'm not saying it's the best criteria for picking talent. I think when we're talking about actual talent, we should still focus on that. But because everything now is somewhat in marketing, business strategy, I, I see where the producers are coming from. In you think casting. it's watered down the industry? To an extent, yes. I wouldn't lie, it has. Because now, in place of actors, I've seen a few things where I've seen, you know, my, because I'm, I'm an actor, I'm also a brand partner, social media, you know, influencer. I've seen situations where they've 
you know, picked skit makers and people that are popular on Instagram for funny videos over actual actors that I know can pull off the role. And this is possibly because of the following they have, which is why I try my best with whatever conversation I'm having with my colleagues that are actors. I always say, first of all, I don't even believe that any actor should have only one source of income. Acting cannot be a primary source of income. So for people like me who have also gone into social media influences, I give out like 50k every week with my music trivia just to attract people to myself. You spend money to make money because mm -hmm. it's a source of income as well. So I think, but it, it, we also cannot force every actor to want to do that. It's unfair to them. It's, it's I don't know, it's, it's like a gray area. It's not black or white with this particular one. But for any actor that has the ability to keep up the social media, I advise that you do it. I really do. What's should we look out for with you in the year to come? Because 2022 is just starting, you yeah. know, show you're working on other projects, you know. Yeah. Um, anything exciting in the works? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, off the top of my head, there's two very exciting jobs that I've done. I don't know that I'm allowed to go into details, but there's, it's amazing to me because these are projects done by women. Sorry, I'm very, no, I'm not sorry actually, I take that back. Yeah. I'm very pro <laughs> Um These two exciting projects, one is with Jadil Shiberu. I'm not even going to tell you what it's called because I don't know that I'm allowed to do that yet. But I just want everybody to know that Jade is brilliant. She's one of the people in the industry that I would literally go to a house at noon and beg her, please, I want to work with you yeah. again and again. She makes you... She, I, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a wholesome feeling. You read the script and as an actor, you're just like, yes, I can't wait to become this person. You get on set and everything she's put together from location to props to your costume, everything makes it easy for you to become that character. I can't wait for everyone to see what she has coming out this year. And in one of the projects, I'm sure she has a few other ones. Watch out for Jadi. The second person is Nadine Ibrahim. Um, I got to shoot for my first time in Abuja with her and was absolutely amazing. Um, it's a different thing from what people have seen See me play. Do. Yes, from anyone who follows my Insta stories, you must have seen a few, um, you know, clips or behind the scenes of the project. It's also very exciting. I'm very happy because these are the things I, I shot last year, and I'm pretty much just going to start this year watching them, and I'm very, very excited. There's a few other things here and there that are not exactly in film that okay. I've been going into. Like I said, as an actor, you can't only have Depend acting as your source of income. It would be unfortunate. So I have a few other things. I've, I'm somewhat in Texas, if I do say okay, so okay. myself. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few things. Like, I'm entering the there's money there. So there's I'm money there, it. Oh, there is. There is. I'm seeing it. So I'm <laughs> like, OK, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do there. I'm dabbling into a few things, and I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'm looking forward to seeing positive feedback once I announce and launch these things. Okay. Yeah. Any, any news from your private life? I know we we'll call it private, but I know you don't like to talk you know, about, about the boys. <laughs> you know, we've seen a few things here and they're flying. What have you but seen? But how single are you? I, it's, Honestly. Hmm. Okay, so let me, let me put it this way. I'm not going to answer that question because... She's not single. Ah, ah, Ebuka. If you're single, you say yes. Who told you that I'm not single? Are you single? Have you met my boyfriend? Are you single? Have you seen me with any man? Yeah, I don't know. You have no yeah, idea. No, so let me let me put it this way. I won't say that I'm single or not, but I don't feel like my relationship status has ever been out there. People have guessed, but it's never you've never really known whether Jemima's in a relationship or not. So are you single? I live a very public, <laughs> private life. This is one area of my life that I enjoy knowing that you're writing me talking. In case you did not hear me, maybe you can read it. Are okay, I'm single. Me? I'm single. You are, are you sure? I might be lying. It's a Sunday. Ebuka, <laughs> <laughs> hey. you're writing okay. me talking okay. for me. <laughs> In case she has not seen it, maybe you can, <laughs> you can read it. I'll report you to Banky. <laughs> well, um, I'll leave you to, you know, <laughs> get your answer from what you're You will find out. Everyone is single until they're married, in my opinion. So when Fair I'm getting enough. married, you definitely know. I don't think I can hide a whole engagement or proposal from everyone. Insta blog is in my nostril. <laughs> if anybody else doesn't guess it, they'll possibly put it on their blog first. <laughs> 
So yeah, everyone is single till they're married. You will know when I'm getting married. Very true. Exactly not our business, but I just wanted to give you. I know you. I knew there was going to be more question you pepper me with. Well done. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything. Looking forward to the Jadio Shibaru one for sure, and of course the Nadine. Said Nadine Ibrahim. Nadine Ibrahim. Yeah, looking forward to both of them, and you know, all the best. 2022 will be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you guys after this. Don't go. Ha, ha, ha.